Hey, 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 everyone, welcome. I don't know who's here yet, but please let us know in the comments if you are present. Uh, my name is Narissa. I'm one of the co-founders of Filter. Please welcome. This is the amazing, spectacular Erica. Hey, Erica. Hi, have, happy, happy afternoon. And thank you so much for the beautiful introduction. Gorgeous, Nerisa. <laughs> how are you guys? <laughs> Hi, how are, is everyone? Thank you for joining us today. This is all about how to ace your interview when when work with students. So I'll leave it with you, Erica. What should we do first? All right. So um, good afternoon, everyone. All right. So if you guys are joining us this afternoon, please make sure to um, tell us where you're coming from. If you're from a university, um, we'll give a shout out to your university. Um, wherever you are in the Philippines or even outside of Philippines, just let us know and we'll give you a shout out. Right. So uh, for this afternoon, wow, I'm loving everyone's energy. Woo! We'll be helping you. Um, with your how to prep yourself and make yourself more um desirable for your dream companies and um your dream employers okay so nariza and i will talk more about how to get that interview and how to ace that interview but before we start with that um let me just tell you that we have loads of amazing opportunities that um we can offer you so mm -hmm. just make sure to follow our filter um, page, we have our official Facebook page, and we also have our LinkedIn official page. So all of our openings are there. We have openings for developers, for designers, digital marketers, admin assistants, um, name it, we have it. So just make sure that you follow our careers page. Okay, so- Fantastic. Erica, can I jump in and talk about our referral program? Of course, yes, please. Woo! All right, shout out to all these people who are on live right now. I see all the universities. Woohoo! Hi, everyone. Hope you're having a lovely day. Um, our referral program. So, if you not only are you looking for jobs, but you have friends, family, ex colleagues, mm -hmm. um, please send their resumes to careers at filterglobal.com and they get a job with Filter. You get 10,000 pesos. And it doesn't matter how many people you refer, it's 10,000 pesos. 5,000 in the second week of starting and the other five after regularization. One of my friends, Mark, shout out to Mark if you're listening to today. He is based in Manila. In 12 months that he has worked with us, he has gotten 90,000 pesos because wow. he keeps referring us amazing people. So that could be you guys. It doesn't matter how many people send them our way. We're great people. So thank you. Go, um, Erica. <laughs> that sounds so enticing, Nerisa. Um, remember, guys, there's no limit. Just what Nerisa said, no limit. So this is the perfect opportunity. Everyone's staying at home. So you're not doing anything. So why not go to the filter speech and take advantage of the referral incentive? Cool. All right. So um, I think we can start now, Narisa. Um, all Do right. It. Okay. So for this afternoon, okay, this is actually a very good topic. So as you all know, because of the pandemic, um, all of the interviews are usually done online now. So pandemic, it really changed the face of um, traditional um, interviews. So for today, our first topic is to talk about how you can get um, a scheduled interview with one of your dream companies. And later on, Narisa will take over and tell you how you can ace that job interview. Okay, are you guys ready? Okay, let's begin. <laughs> okay, so can you guys see my screen? Okay, all right. So how to get an interview? Um, not sure if... Uh, Risa, can you see my screen right now? I can, but it's blank. I don't think we can. Uh, just click on your presentation mm -hmm. <laughs> on your desktop, I think, and then you press share screen. Okay, you guys. Okay, um, let me try again. You know, it's the internet. Okay, can you see that? 
All good? I can see it from my end. I'm not sure if everyone's seeing Not it. yet. I'm sure it will come up soon. Can't see it yet. There we go. How about now? Okay. Just, well, I, I'll just uh, begin, just in case. Okay, so I think um, everyone should be seeing my presentation now. Okay, so let's start with read the job description and the requirements of a job post. This is uh, rule number one. Why is it important for you to read the job description and the requirements of the job post? Because you don't want to waste your time in just sending your applications or CVs and resumes to all the job posted on all the job boards and all the social media pages. You have to apply only for those positions that you're very interested in and the positions that you are highly qualified for. So when you read the job description, make sure that it is aligned with your background, your experience, and make sure that it is also aligned with your interests. For example, if you're, um, if you're a graphic designer and you're looking for a senior graphic designer position in day shift, so you have to make sure does the job post say the location, the shift schedule, um, the industry, or does the job uh, description provide any preference when it comes to your skills? For example, some some companies require um, specific years of experience, but others don't. So you have to take note of that. Some companies even require a very specific background in very specific interest, industries. So make sure that you apply for the position that is aligned with your background, your interest, and of course, your preferences as well. Okay. Next, number two would be for remove necessary information in your resume. You don't have to put everything on your resume. Just make sure that you put the vital information that the interviewer or the recruiter needs to see in your resume. You don't have to put like your age, your birthday, your blood type. If you're married, you don't have to put the name of your spouse, your children, your or your um, religion or political affiliation. Just make sure that you maintain the information that is vital to your application. Okay, number two, I uh, number three, <laughs> limit your resume to two to three pages only. If you can squeeze everything in one page, that would be much better. But never ever exceed more than three pages. Why? Because, of course, recruiters are busy people. The hiring managers are busy people. They don't have the entire day to read the, uh, everything that's treated on your four, five, ten pages resume. Make sure that you always update your resume and make sure that you always format it in a way that it will be enough for one, two, or three pages only. All right. Next. Okay. Proofread your resume before sending. We don't want to see your grammatical errors. Make sure that specifically, for example, if the position that you're applying for requires attention to details and the recruiter or the interviewer sees on your resume that you have a lot of grammar, um, grammatical errors, that will automatically lessen your chance of getting that interview. So make sure you check for grammatical errors, spellings, make sure the font size, the font um, style is the same. Everything is uniform. Everything is clean. And that is very important. So do not forget to proofread your resume before sending. Next. Okay, so your resume is done. It's ready for sending. When you, um, when you draft the email, make sure that you actually attach your resume. Why is that? Because sometimes we tend to forget or we tend to um, forget to click that See the um, on your email, there is a side, an icon for um, the paper clip that means attachment. So don't forget to click that and attach the right file. Make sure that it is the right file because it would be very embarrassing for your recruiters and your interviewer to see a false file that you will attach on your um, application. Okay. Wow, this is also very important. Rename your resume professionally. The keyword there is professionally. What does that mean? Um, it's best to put your full name instead. Please, candidates, do not send your resume with the file name resume or CV or cover letter. We get recruiters get 
a lot of applications every single day. So my tip for you is to put, for example, my name is Erica Carganilia. So instead of putting resume, just put Erica Carganilia resume, Erica Carganilia CV, Erica Carganilia cover letter. Okay, so it's better to be um to put your full name instead of just putting like your initials. Let's say AGC resume, like who is this person? Right, so you want your creator to find your file easily. So make sure that you put your full name in that um, file name. Next, do not forget to include a portfolio too. If you're using a link, make sure your link is accessible to anyone with the link. This is very specific also to candidates who are applying for positions that require portfolio. Perfect example of this would be the graphic designers, the web designers. Um, digital producers. Why is this important for you? Because aside from the CV, your folio will also speak very much of your background, your experience, and your qualification for the position that you're applying for. Now, why do you have to make sure that the link is working? Of course, if you provide us with a link, we will check that link before inviting you for an interview. What happens, Erica, if the link is not working? Time is wasted, not only for you, but also for the recruiter. What usually happens in my case, um, I usually encounter problems with Google Form links. So sometimes they would, instead of provide, if um, the folio is not online like Behance or Dribble, they usually provide Google Drive link. And what they tend to always forget is to provide access um, to anyone who has the link to view the file. So what I'll do is I have to request free access and then you know, time is being wasted because I need to um I need to wait for the reply of the applicant for uh for that applicant to give me access. Okay, now um what happens if um I cannot view? So it prolongs your application process. So my number one tip for you, if you're using Google uh, Drive or Google um folders, please make sure to put the setting of the link to anyone can view. Anyone who has the link can view this file. Okay, it saves you time. It saves the recruiter time. So please do not forget that. Always check if your link is working. Okay, next. Save your resume in a PDF file rather than a Word document. Okay, it's easy to send a file in a Word document and it takes effort to convert it to PDF. But guess what? It takes less than 10 seconds to do that. And the good thing about putting your resume or your CV or cover letter in a PDF file is it doesn't ruin the format. So you you um, exert a lot of time, a lot of effort in formatting your perfect resume. And then you send it in a Word file. Everything gets wasted because the format doesn't show the way it should from your end. Like when you send it using a PDF file, everything will just be as beautiful, as perfect as it is on your end with the recruiter's view or the interviewer's view. So always send your um, your resume or your CV in a PDF file. Okay, next. Oh, this one's very important. Follow up on your application after two to three days. Don't be shy, okay? Recruiters are very busy people. Hiring managers are very busy people. So it's not you. It's sometimes us. So please do not forget, don't be shy to follow up on your application. Usually, we provide updates after 24 to 48 hours. But in the event that you don't receive an update um, within the time frame that is provided to you by the recruiter or the hiring manager, then don't be shy to reach out. You can send an SMS, you can call, or you can also email. It's highly preferred that you send an email first so that it is more formal, but if you don't get an update, you can follow up via text or via call. Just make sure that you'll be very polite and um, respectful when you follow up on your application. All right? Okay. Next. Indicate in your cover letter what you can do for the company once hired and highlight all your skills and achievements. I love this part. This is the part that is usually um, put in the summary section of your resume, okay? 
why do I have to put it in the summary section of your resume? Because when you want you want your recruiters and your in, and your hiring managers to see why they should hire you at that first glance. Okay, don't put it at the bottom part of the page or in the part of the resume that no one else can see it. Make sure that it's there on the top center. Why? Because of course we want to sell your achievements. We, you want to sell why you're the best candidate for the position. You want to sell why you would be an asset to their company. Okay. Um, a good question for this is what can I put um, as my highlight or as achievement? So I suggest that you put your um, your proposals that turn into actual um, policies or actual procedures that help the company. You put there how you how you added value to the company. That's very important. And, mo and my number three um, tip for you is data, data, data. Recruiters, hiring managers love numbers. So, for example, um, if you are a recruiter and uh, you're applying for a job, you can put, I help the company get 50% improved qualities on this um, on the quality of candidates that we hired, 100% retention because of my sourcing strategies, etc. If you can, excuse me, if you can be as specific as you can be on your resume with your with the data and the number of your achievements, that would be awesome. Okay, next, follow instructions in the job ad. Okay, this one is very important, especially if one of the factors that they're looking for is attention to details. If the if the job ad says that you have to send to this email address, if the job ad says that you have to send via this link, please make sure that you follow that instruction because it will say a lot about you as an applicant. Do you know how to follow instruction? Do you know how to comprehend um, simple details? So please make sure read and follow the instructions carefully. All right. Next, avoid job hopping records in your resume. Okay, so of course, especially nowadays, because of the pandemic, it costs a lot of people jobs everywhere. So there are um, there are instances if you're only in your job for a few months and then you have to leave the job because of um, various reasons. If that cannot be provided, um, again, due to for unforese unforeseeable uh, reasons, then what I suggest for you to do, especially if you're doing freelance job, is to just put your free all your freelance work. For example, freelance job from this date to this date, and then just put a short summary of all the clients, industries, and like a short summary of what you did for that specific line or for that um, specific position. You don't have to include all your freelance jobs there. Two to three, again, remember our um, tip earlier, Make sure that you limit your resume to one, two, or three pages only. Do not exceed more than three pages. Okay? Oh, wow. Okay, I think that's the end of our presentation. Okay, so I hope you guys learned a lot from our tips earlier. Later, Nerissa and I will be discussing, uh, will be answering your questions. So save that for later. And now, I bring you to the lovely Nerissa for tips on how to ace that interview. Hey, hey, everyone. Thank you, Erica. That was amazing. Let me know in the chat box what was your favorite tip that Erica shared with you. Also, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and investing an hour of your time. It shows that you really want a great career and you want to be better than you were the day before. And I'm hoping you're learning some things that you can apply immediately. So I would like to give out some random shout outs again. Um, let me scroll down through the comments here. Edison, hi, I'm in Brisbane, Australia. Nice to see from you're the, from the University of Makati. Woo -woo. Yeah. Woo. Hello, okay. hello. Angelica, good afternoon. Uh, who else have we got down here? Uh, Jenica. Jenica, lovely to meet you. Thank you for joining us. We are lovely. Thank you for your lovely comment there. Um, who else have we got down here? Hello, hello, hello. Cebu. Oh, my God. Shout out to everyone from Cebu. Thank you so you much for joining Cebu. us. Woo! I love Cebu. I haven't been to Cebu yet. Have you been to Cebu, Erica? 
Yes, Cebu is amazing. You should go there. You're definitely one of your go-to lists in the Philippines. I absolutely need to. So welcome from Cebu. Uh, if you're looking to find out what current jobs we have, make sure you go to filterglobal.com backslash careers um, or hit us straight up on LinkedIn or send us your email to careers at filterglobal.com. Um, who else have we got here? Matt, I see you're very quite active in the chat. Hi, Matt. Andre, hello. Um, I think Albert asked me how I was. I am doing amazing. I hope you are too. Um, this is fantastic, guys. So I'm going to share my screen. <laughs> Hopefully I can work this out. Um, woo, there it is. Okay. Are we ready? Are we ready? Write in the chat if you're ready. Say yes, 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 yes if you're yes, ready for the tips. Woo, take it away, Nerisa. All right. So Eric has spoken to you about how to prepare your resume to get your front door when it comes to hiring managers and recruitment agencies looking at your application. So I am going to talk to you about you've gotten that interview and you're seeing a client. Um, if Just put in the chat box if you've actually met, if you've interviewed with an Australian before. I am Australian, in case you can't tell, um, or an American. Um, but this is about setting you up for success because how Filipinos interview is a little bit different to what we're wanting from you when you present. So this is really setting you up. I'm going to give you all the secrets to help you prepare for your interview. So first one, let's, let's go. Um, if I can work this out. <laughs> Hang on. I'm trying it's to you can see it. Eh. Hang on, let me go back here. Can you see that? There. Perfect. Woo! All right. So the biggest thing that I see, I, I've interviewed over 8,000 people in my career and I love Filipinos. Now, at the moment, everyone's working from home. So absolutely, you can be in your bedroom, you can be outside uh, where, where the chickens are. Um, I always hear chickens. Um, but the main thing is make sure there's lots of light. The biggest thing when we're interviewing is make sure we can see your gorgeous face. A lot of the time we can't see it. So you turn on light, you open up your blinds, you sit in a part of your house or outside where there's lots of light. And my biggest tip is make sure your bed is made. Seriously, um, it doesn't matter if it's in your bedroom. Just little tip, make sure it's made. I'm a very messy, um, I have. I, I never put my make my bed. But if I was going to interview, I would. So make sure you do that. I'm sure no one is going anywhere at the moment to meet um, someone in person. But if you are, make sure you do Google the location ahead of time. It's really important. So my first tip, make sure your background, so what the interviewer sees through your webcam, is appropriate. Okay, my biggest, 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 biggest tip. Westerners, we love people who are either early or on time. Okay, never ever be late, not even one minute. So my advice, particularly for online meetings, is test the software on your desktop, laptop or phone at least the day before so you know that it works. Um, and then when you're lo logging into the software, make sure you go on at least 10 minutes early. That way, if there's any technical difficulties, you can always message them, email them um, and get it sorted before you're interviewed. So that's my biggest tip, particularly with Australians. We are obsessed with people being on time. So this is setting you up for success. My next tip, my favourite thing to talk about is dress to impress. A lot of people say, what does that mean? Don't turn on your pyjamas. I've had that recently. Not a good look. Right? I want you to, if you're seeing me, it's hopefully because you really want to work with us. Right, so make sure you throw on a nice T-shirt, have a nice dress on, something that makes you feel good. Um, make sure you comb your hair. It's always important, comb your hair, brush your hair. Um, put on some perfume, put on some cologne, whatever it is that makes you feel like I'm, I'm ready. 
I am ready to conquer the world. I'm ready to impress the interviewer. Um, my other little tip is if you're interviewing online, what works really well because of lighting reasons is wearing something, a pale top or a pale dress. So white, pale blue, pale pink, pale purple, anything that's kind of soft really looks um, really well on video. So that would be my tip. But honestly, as long as you brushed your hair and, you, and you're looking sharp, you'll be fine. The most interesting part um, with Westerners is we love it when you research our company. Okay, and the biggest tip I can get you from when I've interviewed a lot of Filipinos is you might look at the website and you might look at the About Us page. It's really critical that you really delve into the company. What is it about this company? What do they do? So for my advice would be go to the about, go to every single page on the website, about us, services, um, projects, client work, testimonials, their careers page. Really do your best to absorb who is this company? What do they do? What is their ethos? What's important to them? Um, and then definitely check out, and, uh, and when I say check out, I mean stalk, um, all their social media pages, okay? So go on their company Facebook, go on their Instagram, go on their TikTok, go on their YouTube, definitely check them out on LinkedIn. The reason why is we really appreciate when people have really thought through why they want to come and work for us, right? So I'll give you a great example. Um, we've had a few people join us recently, as in the filter team, and when I said to them, what do you know about filter? It wasn't just telling me, you guys do outsourcing in digital and e-commerce. It was talking about how we came about, the industries that we did, the disciplines that we focused on. And then those that even pressed me more would say, Narissa, I found a video of you speaking at an event six years ago and I watched the video on YouTube. And here's the three key points that resonated with me the most. Let me tell you, that is what we call research. And remember, it makes your interviewer feel important because you're trying to impress the interviewer, um, but they also want to impress you. And so it shows that you've really thought about it and you've really learned something. So my advice is always um, reference it. It could be projects. You might see on Facebook, they've released a, a latest project. Talk about it, bring it up in your interview going, hey, I saw this on Facebook, how did this come about? Or I noticed that you um, choose this charity to support. What made you choose this charity as your company charity? It's okay to ask questions. Westerners love, love, love questions. For us, it shows that you are very interested. Do not be shy, do not be scared. Um, it's really important that you are showing an interest in what we do and how we like to do it. Review the job description. So come prepared. And what's really important is this is your career. Okay, this is your life. You need to understand who you're working for. So you need to work out what is important to you. What is not on the job description that you wanna find out? What is not on their website? So we love questions. In fact, and a lot of Filipinos I've met have said they didn't realise this, is they think it's rude to ask questions at an interview. It is absolutely not. We've had clients who won't proceed to a second interview because the person didn't have interview questions prepared. So it's very serious and, again, it shows interest. So I'll give you some good questions and don't ask what's on the job description. Always ask something around it. So maybe it could be my favourite one to ask actually is what made you join the company, Erica? And what's made you stay? The reason why that's a powerful question is you're uncovering what, why did, the, why did your soon-to-be boss join the company? 
What was it about the business, the role, the team that they said, yep, I'm going to join the company? And the second question is just as revealing. It's actually showing you why they've stayed working there, which helps you make an educated decision when you get offered a job if you want to take the opportunity. So that's probably my perfect thing. Maybe it's, um, have you worked with Filipinos before? How will you integrate your Western culture or your Australian office or your US office with the team in Manila? What's the plan? It could be around training. It could be about your career path. Um, but just think about what is important to you and write those questions down. My other big tip, and I've seen this all around the world, it's okay to be nervous in an interview. In fact, I get nervous when people aren't nervous. Nerves is a good thing because it means that you care and you want to put your best foot forward. So don't ever worry if you're nervous. Um, but because of nerves, because you're trying to impress us and we're trying to impress you. So everything in your head, you forget. Everyone does it. My advice is always to write down the questions you want to ask. Write it on your phone, write it on a piece of paper. So that way when they say, what questions do you have? You actually can refer to it and you don't blank out because we all blank out, right? That's just normal. The same thing can I say with your achievements. What Westerners really want to hear is, how did you add value to your previous company? What did you do that was um, special? And Filipinos, you guys are very, very humble. The one time you have permission to shine and showcase and talk about how fabulous you are, honestly, is an interview. We're expecting you to tell us you are amazing, okay? So I appreciate that might be like, ah, I don't want to. But the best way of doing that is actually writing some things down before you interview and thinking, what have I achieved last year? What did I achieve in my previous job? Was it like how um, Erica said about the QA? Was it that you put a manual together that didn't even exist before? Was it that yeah. you introduced a client to them? It's really about thinking about it and being comfortable that with Westerners, we don't see it as bragging. We just see it as you're an expert telling us what you've achieved. So we see it as a, a true positive. So let me give you that confidence. The biggest thing is, is some of you have interviewed a lot. Some people haven't interviewed at all or very little. The tip I can give you, and yes, I have done this myself, is practice saying your responses in a mirror. So actually think about what are the common questions an interviewer will always ask. Google is your best friend. So Google, if you're like, I don't even know what interviewers ask, Google it. Just go, what are the top 20 questions that interviewers ask? Trust me, a lot of it's the same. It's what do you know about our company? Why do you want to work for us? Why do you think you'd be great for the job? Tell me about your experience. Talk me through your highlights and your achievements within your, your previous role. Tell me about a time when you faced this challenge. The best thing you can do is practice every scenario at home in front of your mirror and then you get into your interview and you finish it going, that was easy. That was so easy. They didn't even ask me. I was so prepared. They didn't ask me half the questions. It's way better to do that than just turn up and hope that you'll wing it. Set yourself up for success. Give yourself every opportunity to succeed. The more you practice, the more confident you will get when you're talking to um, an interviewer. Um, we've already talked about this, about making sure you've got three smart questions that you want to ask, and I have given you some tips on that. And can I say, you don't need to have, when people ask you questions, it's okay to think about it. It's okay to pause, take a deep breath, and think before responding. It shows that you're considered and that you are thinking about the best example. So don't worry about talking, talking, talking. 
just have a think and deliver what you can. For foreign clients, we appreciate that ma'am, sir, ms, mr, po um, is very respectful in the Philippine culture. Mm-hmm. But for Westerners or foreigners, we, I would call Erica Erica and I would expect Erica to call me Narissa. So my biggest tip as well is be confident. We're equals. It is very, very respectful if I call you, um, if I say Erica, that she would call me Narissa. So really, I know that can be quite challenging, but even if you need to practice that, I've had people I've worked with before um, in the Philippines who just had to practice it a little bit time, a bit of time going Narissa, 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 instead of ma'am, um, and that's okay. So just practice that. You are not being disrespectful at all. Um, so I just want to encourage you to use our first names. Definitely, and Erica touched on this before, we love facts and figures and evidence okay it's really important don't just say yeah my boss really liked me why did your boss really like you my boss loved me because i helped the team build a b c d e and because we did it as a team i we were able to contribute five percent to the revenue so always think of percentages always think of numbers think of dollars did you save money for your, did you spot something that someone had missed and you saved 12 hours of time did you fix a process that before would take two people now it only takes one anything that is factual that supports what you're saying westerners and foreigners really love to hear that so we love to hear that it's evidence tell me why you were good and Tell me why you're the perfect person and give me proof. Um, And be honest during the interview. Don't promise things or say things that you can do if you've never done it before. It's okay to say, I saw that on the job description. I don't have experience with that. I don't have practical experience, but I have done some research and this is what I've uncovered. And I'm happy to do that once I get hired. That is far more appealing and absolutely acceptable than saying I can do it all and then get in your job and you can't do it all. So we really welcome honesty. And as long as, again, if you can say you've done some research, that goes a long way. Then you say, no, I've never heard of that program. Or you're asking about formulas. No, I've never done that. It could be actually in Excel, I'm really good at pivot tables and I'm actually going to do um, a free eight hour course about formulas and macros in the next coming weeks. So I will be prepared by the time I get this job. That shows initiative, that shows proactivity and it shows that you looked at the job description going, oh, that's important to them. Um, Bad-mouthing your previous employers or colleagues. You can be quite clear. Nothing is more distressing when I hear this from Filipinos that they've been yelled at from their previous employers, that they haven't been given their benefits, that they haven't even... I've had people who haven't even... I've, I've interviewed people who haven't even been paid properly. I mean, honestly, that is just horrific. That is not bad mouthing. That is a fact. So saying I'm leaving, I'm leaving the business because unfortunately um, my HMO benefits that I was prom- promised weren't delivered is fine. That's a very respectful way. You're not saying my previous manager was horrible and she would yell at me all the time and she didn't do anything that she said she would do. So always just think about how you would word things and delivering that in a way that we go, oh, that makes sense. I can see why Danica decided to leave that job. I can see why Jed decided to leave that job. So really think about how you position um, previous companies because also I've met people who've said every job was a terrible job. They had every manager was a terrible manager. 
do you know what? That is a reflection of you, not it comes across as a reflection of you, not your previous companies. So just be very mindful of how you position that. Um, and don't forget to smile. The most powerful thing is you, it's just a chat. An interview is just a conversation. And remember, you are interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. This is your life, your career. You need to get as much information as you can to make an educated decision. So with that, make sure when you jump on your video call, I always say have a big, uh, not like that, but a big smile on your face and be like, hi, hi, Narissa, so lovely to meet you. How's your day? It instantly lifts up the mood and makes people feel good. And um, everyone here has beautiful smiles, so absolutely do it. And remember, if you're nervous, it's also a good way to overcome nerves. If you're smiling and nodding and thinking, that comes across a lot better than this or this. So, yeah, don't forget to smile. Remember, it's a conversation. Have fun. Ask some questions. It's a two-way street. That's probably my biggest tips. So I hope that was informative. Um, hope you guys like that. I am really excited to see your questions um, and what you have for Eric and mine. Yeah, thank you so much for that, Narisa. So um, I'm actually browsing and I think we have some pretty good questions. So let's see. Okay, let's yeah. do it. Okay, so guys, keep your questions coming. We're ready for you. Okay. Oh. We have, I think um, this is a good question. If I get rejected on my first interview, when should I reapply again? Mm. What do you think, Erica? Okay, so on, um, personally, it depends sometimes on the company's policy. So there are companies that will allow you to reapply as fast as after two months or three months, but some companies are more strict Sometimes they do not allow um, applicants to apply for the same position after six months or sometimes even one year. So in that case, when you get a feedback from the recruiter that unfortunately you did not, um, you cannot advance to the next stage, it's not, um, don't be shy to ask the recruiter if you can reapply again and ask how soon or how fast can you reapply again. Yeah, and let me add to what Eric is saying. It's okay to ask could I have done something better? What yeah. tips could I have done that you might have gotten from the client that could help you? So the key is understand why you weren't successful that time and then, um, and then apply that to your next role. Um, but absolutely, um, you can apply again, but make sure you, you might have to streamline your your resume, your cover letter, and showcase why. So yes, Tala, great, really good question. Okay, we have another one from Matt Talanya. Hi, Matt. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I like this question. Um, is it okay to use black outfit for the interview? What do you think, Teresa? All right, you ready for... <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you how it's perceived from um a western arm okay from an interviewer i should say so mm -hmm. always think you're in competition mode right you know that the hiring manager is interviewing multiple people so here's my little tip if you can avoid wearing black don't wear black because i'm telling you everyone else is wearing black so it's very hard to stand out but people, I've often had clients say to me, oh, the lady with the yellow necklace mm. um, or the gentleman with the, the um, pale pink shirt. You have to remember they're interviewing all day, every day, and sometimes it's those little things. So I'm all about what can you do subtly to stand out? So if you wear all black, 100% do it, but make sure you wear red lipstick because then you pop, right? It's all about popping in an interview. <laughs> Um, so that would be my one tip. Black's fine, but if you want to be a little bit different, wear colour. What okay. do you think, Erica? 
I totally agree. Um, I also did that once when I attended an interview. I was um, in an all-black outfit, but I made it sure to wear my favorite red lipstick for that interview so that it will pop just like what he said because it will be the accent to your all black outfit especially if it's an all black make sure that you have that one color that will be an accent or that will pop and that will help the recruiter or the interviewer um remember you okay so thank you so much for that narisa all right we have another question from april rose castillo cerezo Hey, April. Okay, her question is, good afternoon. This is my question. Others said, overconfidence in the job interview can cause failure to be hired. Is it true? Okay. If you can't back it up with evidence, absolutely it would be true. But if you can be confident, because remember, you think you're being too confident to us, you're just being yourself. Okay, so Filipinos, as I said, are very, very humble. So just just be yourself. And as long as you can say, I'm great at this job because of ABC, a, that is not being overconfident. You're stating facts. When you're saying, I'm amazing, but you can't support that, yes, that's probably when I'd be like, hmm, that's not great. But I'm telling you, I don't think I've ever, ever met a Filipino who is overconfident. I've never met a Filipino who brags, ever. So just own who you are, talk through your um, your successes, and honestly, we will love it. That's my tip. I hope right. that helps. Thank you so much for that. Okay, I hope we helped you, April, with that question. Another one from Steven Garcia. How do we prevent technical issues on an online interview? Wow. That is a very good and very timely question. So um, I think in my opinion, Stephen, again, one of the best ways for you to prevent any technical issues or any issues at all before your interview is preparation. Preparation is key. So for example, if you're invited for an online interview and the recruiter, let's say, was not able to provide um the software that you're gonna use is it zoom is it google is it skype you have to know why because you have to install it in advance because for example if you're not let's say a zoom user or microsoft teams user you have to familiarize yourself first with the software right so that's the number one reason and number two you have to be able to navigate it um well before your interview because sometimes during online interviews, you tend to mute yourself during interviews while this other speaker is um is speaking, right? And then when it's your turn to speak, you suddenly, oh, where is it? Where's the mute? Okay. And then what you didn't realize is that, is that you're on mute the entire time or your video um was not showing the entire uh, time. So we don't want that to happen to you. So again, preparation is the key. Test your software. Test your camera. If you're using headset or um, um, earphones, test it. If it will work well with the audio, test everything. Not um, at the last minute. Give at least 30, a much better one hour. Test it twice if you have to. Okay, again, preparation is the key. Okay, so thank you so much for that question, by the way. Now, another question from George Banyaga Jr., how does body language also speaks in the interview? Oh, wow. Very interesting question. Okay. Um, all right. So okay. I... Oh, you go first. Okay. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, George. I'm a, you can see that I'm like big hands person and I get very animated. So I'm moving around. Um, we love passion, right? And I appreciate some people are really extroverted. So you can see me with my hands and I'm like, la, 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 right? That's how I am. And other people are quite reserved. Mm -hmm. The main thing with your body language is you look interested. You're nodding when you understand. And you look like you want to be there. So if you're doing this, and I've truly had this, so please don't do this like that. <laughs> that shows me very clearly you don't want to be in there. So my advice is always think about your hands, how you're looking. A lot of people forget to look at the webcam, at the camera. So they'll be looking this way and talking to me. 
absolutely know where your webcam is and talk to your webcam because it eye contact is really really important so that's my tip george okay. but great question and sorry to add also on your reset because i already experienced this a couple of times already guys if you're doing an online interview please don't if you're in a sw um swinging chair please don't do like that or um, okay so Please don't do that. It shows that you're not interested. You're not enthusiastic about the application. We don't want to see that. So if you're not if you're not that invested in the application, don't apply at all. Okay. All right. Very good question. Another one from Patricia Manzano Rosario. Is it okay to be emotional during interview? Because sometimes the questions during the interview was too good to be true. Okay. So, uh. Okay. Do, do you want me to handle this? <laughs> okay. So my advice is don't be too emotional during an interview. Remember, this is professional, this is business. So you are trying to put your best professional self forward. So how you demonstrate yourself in an interview is how they believe that you will behave um, at work. Now, I've had people say, you know, thank you so much. It's been a lot. Thank you for giving me confidence. That's, that's to me, that's emotional, that's acceptable. But just be very careful that you, um, about how you come across. So just be like, thank you. This was delightful. I really enjoyed meeting you regardless. So that's my tip is just think about professionalism and how you're coming across in a business setting. All right. Thank you so much for that. And we send good question, Patricia. All right. Another one. Teresa Sofia Enriquez is asking, good day. How can we know if the interview went well? Well, you will know how. They sometimes recruiters provide real-time feedback. I usually do this all the time with my candidates. If they do really well, I inform them, you know, that, hey, um, your answers are good. You prepared for the interview. I like that you research about a company. But in the event that the recruiter or the interviewer um, did not provide any feedback for you, you can ask the interviewer or the recruiter about uh, how did I um, do with the interview? Um, did I answer your questions? Do you need any information, uh, additional information from me? Or sometimes all you have to do is to patiently wait because not all decisions will be provided to you real time. Sometimes the recruiter or the interviewer will say, please give us a day to um, evaluate your application. It could take a day, a, a day or two, or a week sometimes, or um, in a lot of cases as well, if they are processing a lot of candidates, candidate especially um, during this time, you know, unemployment rate is way too high, so it takes them time. So. Make sure um, to follow up with your recruiter. Again, that's what we said earlier. Don't be shy to approach your recruiter and ask for feedback. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Therese. And another one from Lelaine Ann. Is it fine to state some family problems in an interview? If like in case, it would be the answer why did you left your previous company? Um, personally, I think yes, of course, because it's important um, it's just important to be honest and transparent with your reasons if it's because um i usually encounter this um a lot of times you know family problems because someone in the family passed away they have to go back to the province to take care of um family um business etc or also personal if you if you got pregnant you gave birth you have to take care of your child first it's totally um normal so don't feel bad if you have to be um, transparent or you have to share something personal but if you're not comfortable sharing very personal details um, it's also okay just let the recruiter know um, it's something personal it's family related or we're not gonna dig deeper about um, your personal issues okay. yep okay this one is from Christine DG is it okay to ask for the specific amount of salary so what do you think? Yes, please. <laughs> so this is the differences. Um, normally when Eric and I interview people and we're like, okay, tell us about what you're wanting, we'll give them a very big range. It'd be like, I want 30,000 to 50,000 pesos. But Floridas don't work that way. 
we want to know if we were to offer you the job today, what do we need to offer you for you to accept? So it's really important you're very clear about what you want because imagine if you want 50 and, I, and you go through four interviews, you do testing, and then I come to you and I'm like, oh, it's 30,000 pesos. And you're like, I wanted 50. I'm like, you said the range was 30 to 50. We're only paying 30, right? So it's really important to be quite clear um, and really think about when you're asking for money, why? So if you're on 25,000 pesos and you meet with a recruiter or hiring manager and they ask you, okay, talk me through, what do you want? What are you expecting? If, you're, if you say you're on 25 and you're asking for 50, there needs to be a justification. Why do you deserve 50? So it cannot be things like, um, oh, my friend gets 50, so I need 50. These are things that I've heard, Erica. Don't laugh. These are things that I've heard. My no, friend, yeah, my, my friend has 50. Um, I have to support three of my siblings, so I need more money. In, with foreigners, we, we respond to your work history, not your family situation. So if you can say to me, I'm on 25, but I've done some investigation. I realise the market is probably paying with someone of my level experience between 50 and 60. This is what I was able to demonstrate in the last three years of my job. And I was able to provide this value, 100% easy. Okay, great. Um, but if, you're, if you do say, oh, because I, I'm the only one working my family and I need to support the family, mm -hmm. As much, so that is a real thing, right? We understand that. But that is not how foreigners think. So you can't come up with that reason. Think of another reason to showcase why you're worth the salary. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more insight into how foreigners think. But absolutely, yes. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Another one from, is it Brian is for you So he's asking, is it okay to use some script during the online interview okay let me take this the answer is a big no 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 again regardless if this is an online interview or a face-to-face personal interview just act normal just what Teresa said you know this is just a conversation an interview is just a normal conversation with another person so please don't use scripts just um instead of using script i highly suggest that you review your resume or your CV and the job description before your interview so that whatever you need to remember about your achievements, your work history, or details about the company, the role, you already have it in your mind. You don't have to read it because it's a big um, it's a big no-no for candidates to read something during the we will know. Mind you, recruiters know, interviewers know, hiring managers know when you're reading something. So please, just don't do it. We can see this. can see people reading this way. <laughs> and remember, it's your, it's your resume. It's your experience. You know you better than anyone else. So definitely don't use a script. Have notes if you need to reference about like a reminder, like I said, about the questions, but don't use a script. Okay, thank you so much for it. Now, another, wow, this is a good question. Thank you so much, Jessamy yeah. de los Reyes. Her question is, what encouragement can you give us for, for us to overcome our fear in job interview? Okay, so Nerisa can add later, but for, uh, personally for me, um, you have, you more than anyone know what you can bring into the table. You know your history, you know what you have done in the past, and you know also your what else you can do for the future company. So that is another reason why we want you to review or to update your resume. Because when you're updating your resume, um, and this is, I'm speaking from personal experience, when you're updating your resume and you're trying to remember what have I done with the other companies that added value to their organization, it makes you remember, oh, I did this, I did that, I helped with this, I, I helped them save this makes you become more confident and it reminds me that you are an awesome you are a rock star candidate and 
that in a way gives you more confidence. So again, confidence is the key. Preparation is the key. Okay, Teresa, how? What about for you? Do you know that Jessa that really comes down to practice? And I'll tell you another tip. This actually works. Jump up and down before you into. Now I'm assuming this is got online, right? So don't do it in front of camera. But if you jump up and down, it actually increases the endorphins, right? So it actually gets your heart pumping and you feel better. So remember, fear is normal, like Erica said, preparation. But get yourself pumped up. Look confident. Um, if you're worried, so if you're like, oh, my God, I'm so nervous, the other tip, guys, is don't ever tell an interviewer you're nervous, okay? We don't need to know that. So don't tell us that. We don't, you've got, remember, if you're saying you're confident, you can tell your recruiter that, but just not, not us. Keep your hands. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I'm shaking. I've been shaking before, so don't worry. I literally put my hands on the table. It helps balance you and it keeps you stable and it helps you remain that confidence and look into your inside. So that's a little tip. Yeah, thank you so much. Hope for that helped, Jessica. Huh? Great question. Yeah. Okay, another one from Wilfredo de Lopez. Guys, I love your questions, by the way. Very smart, really good questions. Keep them coming. Okay, how does self-confidence um, important when it comes to an interview? Okay, so we already answered um, a similar question before, but again, it's very important for you to be very con to be confident in your interview because you are selling yourself, you are selling your achievements, you are telling the interviewer why you need to be part of that company, how you can add value to that company. That's why it's con you need to be confident because if you're not confident, how can you express yourself? How can you answer the questions? How can you look the interviewer in the eye and say, I did this, I did that? So that's why it's very important for you to be confident. Okay, thank you so much yeah. for that, Wilfredo. And Arisa, will add something. Let me just add to that too, Wilfredo. It's a really good question. Just remember, guys, that you've already been selected for an interview, right? So you should feel really proud of that. Of all the applications someone has received, they have invited you to interview with them. So already you must be hitting boxes um, and they must be looking at your resume going, oh, wow, I can't wait to meet Al Wilfredo because they look fantastic. So um, just go in there knowing they have chosen you and they're looking forward to seeing you. And that should help you with you thinking, yeah, I've got this. I am fabulous and I'm going to show them that I can do this job and, I, and I'm a great fit for their business. I love that. Thank you so much for that, Teresa. Okay, another one from Isha Gacho. Very cool name. Hi, good afternoon, Erica and Teresa. Do you hire students aside from graduates and those with working experience already? Oh, okay, this is actually a good question. Um, right now, actually, majority of our openings are for full-time employees. But in the event, like for example, you are still a student, but you know that you can manage your time you can perform 100% and you can commit to your job. Of course, you are still very much welcome to apply with us. In fact, um, we have an opening for a junior graphic designer position. It's only for a part-time job. So we've already encountered candidates who are um, still studying, but um, they're not doing full-time or they're not attending full-time classes. That's why um, we are still accepting applications for that. So again, make sure that you read the job description. If the job a description will require you to be fully committed to the role and you know that your, your class schedule will um, hinder you from performing your task, then um, maybe you can just apply next time when you, are, we can, when you can already fully commit to the position. But if you know that you can, you can manage your time and it will not hinder you from per performing your task, then by all means, please do apply. Okay, another one from Ali Okamu. Oh. My question is how we can manage a rude interviewer. Oh, maybe Ali already had a, not a very unfortunate experience in the past. I'm so sorry for that. Okay, this is actually a good question, Ali. Um, in in my opinion, and Teresa can add later, 
in my opinion, you have to just be professional. You cannot handle what the interviewer will say or how the interviewer will react, but you can handle how you can react. And you know, if you know yourself, you have to be the better person. So even if the interviewer is um, being rude, you can just stay. You can say something like, "Excuse me, I um I don't feel comfortable during this interview. Um, maybe if you can rephrase your question or something like that. But don't tell the person like, "Hey, you're rude. Don't do that." Okay, <laughs> you can say it in a different manner, but still, always make sure that you're professional and polite. Okay, Marisa, what did you say? Yeah, that's awful that you've had that experience. And so I agree with Erica. You behave the way that you would behave and treat others. So you just keep being you and being your respectful, lovely self. And then I think that would be an indication of the company. So if they invited you for a second interview and offered you the job, it's in your discretion to say no. Uh, because it's an indication of who you potentially might be able to work for. So, yeah, I hope that helps, Ali. Okay, thank you, Marisa. Grace, Ray Jessa Dorado Escalera is asking, how about if the recruiter didn't give, feed, give any feedback after the interview, but you keep following up, is it normal in the Philippines recruiter to have this ghosting attitude? You know what? This term, ghosting, has been trending recently, and it's, it's not in a good way. No, it is not normal for a recruiter not to give feedback. So that is why earlier um, we, tell, we told you that if the recruiter doesn't provide feedback within the time frame that they originally committed to, don't be shy to follow up. Okay, it's not rude. It's again, like what Nerisa said earlier, this is your application, this is your life, this is your potential job that we're talking about. So just make sure that you, um, you do it in the right way. You email if you have to, you send an SMS, um, you call, you can ask the recruiter if you can call and ask for an update. That's totally normal, okay? But to answer your question, is it normal for the Philippine recruiters to have this ghosting attitude? The answer is definitely no. Recruiters are also professional individuals. So probably, um, you know, recruiters also do a lot of things every day. Um, they. I don't think that that is their intention. So um, feel free to always follow up on your application if you haven't received any feedback in a few days already. Okay, Diana. Uh -huh. Diana oh, sorry, yeah, you can read that. Okay, sorry, Nurse, you were adding something? No, no, I was going to respond to this. Oh, okay, okay, sure. So her question is, how do you respond to personal questions during interview? Is it really inappropriate? and or illegal to ask such questions to the interviewee. All right, Narisa, take it away. So Diana, really interesting question. Absolutely, there are some questions that someone might ask you that are totally inappropriate and you have every right to say, oh, I don't feel comfortable chatting about that. But let me give you also a perspective um, and I'm talking purely about Australians here. The way that we interview other Australians is when we're hiring someone, it's never about the it's never just about the technical competency. We actually genuinely like to know who you are. Who are you after work? So when we ask, we 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 generally want to know. So is if it's you've got twenty cats and ten dogs and um, you have three children and they're all going to high school or whatever, we actually genuinely want, like to know that because it helps us go, oh, that makes sense. Um, and that's really good to know. Now, you don't have to give us that information. If, if someone asks you personal questions, maybe go around the whole point of hobbies. So this is what I do outside of work. This is who I am. I live in Manila. I live in Cebu. Um, I live in Baguio. So absolutely always look at the intent. Why is someone asking you? So from an Australian point of view, again, we're genuinely asking because we're genuinely interested in who you are as a person. But yes, um, feel free just to say, oh, hey, I don't feel comfortable at answering that. Um, and then just keep moving on. Hopefully that helps. That's from my perspective. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Teresa. Okay, from Lalaine Ann, 
Thus, using um hmm, or other fillers can cause bad impression to the interviewer. Um, in my opinion, it's normal, okay? Because let's face it, um, English is not our first language, but there is a very thin line when it becomes very is unnecessary. It's and it's not only the fillers. The, um, uh, it's also using words like basically, actually. Please, um, you can you can use that, but don't like start every sentence with it. I this is a true story. I had one applicant, and he started all of his sentences, all of his answers with basically. So when I left the company, when I left the company, basically this is what I did. Basically, you can avoid that. Ash, that is the truth. You can avoid that. You just have to practice speaking. Um, in the English language, um, you can watch movies uh, or listen to radio shows in English so that you can enhance your vocabulary. And also, you can read more books in English. Sometimes people don't enjoy it because they're not, they don't enjoy reading. So maybe you can find a book that is more inclined to your interest so that you'll be more interested to do it or a movie show that is more, that fits your taste in genre uh, better. That will definitely help you increase, um, widen your vocabulary and increase your confidence. But no, it's it's not that bad to use fillers. It's totally normal. Just don't overuse it. Okay, so Jean-Marie G. Castilla is asking, how do you end an introduction in an interview? Oh, I think... I think that, I don't know if this is right, Jamari, is, is this what you mean by someone said, tell us about yourself and you could be there for mm -hmm. 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 30 seconds. That's how I'm going to interpret that question. Let us know if that's not right. It's really important to be succinct and to the point, but also give them something. So I always like to say um, kind of, Try and do it within three minutes. So go, hey, Erica, so lovely to meet you. And if Erica says, hey, tell me about yourself, we'll be like, hey, my name is Narissa. Thanks so much for having me here. Um, as you can see from my background, I have 18 years experience in recruitment. I've managed and opened three businesses. Um, I sold one in 2017. Um, I, I'm here for a, I don't know, recruitment job. Um, I've interviewed over 8,000 people. I've lived in Singapore. Um, I've recruited globally. These are the roles that I've recruited. I'm going to make this up, but, well, it's not made up, it's true. CEOs, but we'll be here all day. CEOs, financial controllers, CFOs, developers, graphic designers, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah, and that's kind of like how I'd finish it, like really succinct, but just t tell them what they need to know high level and then stop talking. What most people do is they keep talking because they're like, I don't know what to do. My biggest question is just say it in three minutes and then close your mouth. And your interviewer, if they want to ask more questions, they always will. So if someone tells me, I've had people who've said, hey, I've, uh, so I've traveled, you know, all over the world. And I'll be like, oh, what's your favorite place to travel? And they'll be like, oh, I love the Philippines. And I'm like, oh, whereabouts in the Philippines? I love the Philippines. And then it could be, oh, I love uh, Boracay. Oh, when did you last go? So it's up to us as the interviewer to ask questions, right? So always high level. Right. Okay, we have another good question from Tati Espinosa. How soon can an applicant reapply if he had not if he had not been taken in the company by a month earlier? Does this does this apply if he is applying for a new and different position? Oh, okay, this is very technical question. Good question. So for example, you were not successful in your first application and then you found out that there is an opening that better suits your qualification and your experience. You uh, again, it it varies, but sometimes you can apply as soon as possible. You can inform the recruiter, for example, "Hey, Erica, I just visited your company website, and it says there that you have an opening for this position. And I think actually that my experience and my background better fits your uh, the role that you're looking for. Can I reapply?" You can ask the recruiter that because 
if their if the recruiter will tell you, oh, sorry, you have to wait for three months or six months or one year to reapply, they will tell you. But if you can apply as soon as possible, they will also tell you. So again, there's no harm in asking. You don't have to pay anything if you're going to ask. So just ask, okay? Right. Thank you so much. Oh, okay. Rio, uh... how to be fluent like you in English, Miss Erica? You're amazing. I like writing more than speaking in English. I don't think I'm near native level, but definitely my personal yeah. secret is that I watch a lot of movies. All right, that's um, that's why I also give that same tip to the candidates to watch movies or read books. If again, like you, if you if you don't if you're more into writing, keep that um keep improving on that aspect, okay? But if you really need to improve on um speaking English, I guess. Number one, try also conversing in the English language with your friends, with your family. Sometimes Filipinos, this is for real, Nerisa. I had um, feedback from candidates before that they are shy to practice in front of their families and friends because Filipinos tend to be very um, particular when it comes to grammar. Do not mind them, okay? This is your life. This is your job that we're talking about. So how you want to improve yourself, how you want to enhance your skills, it's up to you. As long as you're, you're not doing anything bad, you're not harming anyone, do what you have to do to improve yourself. All right? You got this, Rio. Okay. Next. Okay. I think um, we can take in um, last few questions. Okay. But anyway, for Mark Steven, would it affect the applicant's candidacy if he or she chose not to disclose previous salary when the interviewer asked about it? What do you think, Arisa? Mark, to be honest, my uh, I don't think I've ever in my career have ever met someone who hasn't disclosed their salary. So my question would be, that would be a, a alarm bells for me. I'd be wondering why, what's the problem? Why won't you tell me? So I, to be honest, I would be thinking more, why? Because it doesn't, because to us it's part of like, it's just normal. Um, so yeah, that's my thought process is, if you feel uncomfortable, you can always give a range. So if you don't want to say what you're exactly on, you can say, I was earning, but you know, up to sixty thousand pesos or one hundred twenty thousand pesos, including my benefits and my performance bonuses. That right. might be a tip. Mm -hmm. And um, also to add, um, for the applicants, the reason why, if if the salary details are not provided, and um, it's also not in the job description, you also have to understand that the reason why recruiters or your interviewers ask about your current or your previous salary is so that they will also have an idea if your expected salary is within the budget range or above the range or below. So it will also save you time to inform the recruiter, hey, this is my expected salary. If the recruiter says, oh, I'm sorry, but our budget is um, doesn't meet your expectations and it saves both of you time right so don't be shy like what Nerisa said if you're not comfortable to share the specific amount you can just share the um the salary range okay so for flower bell i love your name <laughs> how can we avoid negative negative thinking okay um personally I don't think we can avoid it, but how we can react to it is how we can control. So it's very normal for uh, for us to have negative thoughts, to have anxiety, especially when we're um, preparing for interviews, when we're um, talking to strangers, to interviewers, sometimes the, the best of us, you know, um, it gets us. But how do you avoid it? You have to change your mindset. You have to focus on what you're actually doing. So if you're an applicant and you're thinking, oh, I cannot do this, I cannot answer, I'm not good enough. Instead of thinking that, think, why should they hire me? Why am I the best person for this job? What can I offer to this company? Why am I attracted this, to this position? You have to remind yourself all those things, right? But neither is anything you want to add. <laughs> no, I just want to say, Flower Bell, it's normal. Everyone gets nervous. Erica and I were nervous before we did this. And you do wonder. Um, and that's okay. And like Erica said, you've just got to learn to put it aside. 
Um, if some people like to have positive sayings in front of them and repeat them, some people like to listen to music that inspires them before an interview, anything to help them feel and change that attitude when they're nervous or they're feeling like negative. So yeah, that'd be my tips as well. But you were completely normal. We all feel like that at some stage. True. Okay. Another one from Karen Gabriel Del Rosario. Very cute thing, Karen. Is verbal proficiency level to certain language is important mm. during an interview? Yes. Um, it varies per position. Some positions have require like native English speaker level. Some positions require average speaking level. It depends on the requirement of that position. That's why earlier, um, remember during our talk about how to um a to land a job interview, I asked, uh, I told you to read the job description because it's important to read the job descriptions because most of the time, recruiters put the details, excellent communication skills is needed, or sometimes they just put average communication skills is needed. So um, make sure to read the job descriptions. And even if sometimes this happens, even if you're not very um, confident with your English um, level, don't be shy to apply because sometimes just uh, uh there are also instances that you just think that you're not good enough but actually you are so if you if you will think in advance that okay my english is so so i'm not gonna get this job you will never get a job okay so again he is your confidence okay thank you so much Karen. and um do we still have more questions okay Canning, Canning Lamig. Okay, this is not your real name, but this is this is a funny name. Okay, can you give us some tips on how to answer why should we hire you? Oh, this is a very good question. Okay, uh, Nisa, do you want to uh, take it? Okay. Yep. Uh, awesome name and awesome photo there. Um, I'll tell you what not to do. Don't say I'm hardworking, I'm honest, I'm reliable, because everyone says that. The best tip I can give you is about why should we hire you when you're dealing with foreigners is, again, think about the role and think about the key points that they're looking for. So why should we hire you? If it's a, say they wanted... Um, seven years design experience working for an international agency, you would say that. Why should we hire you? Well, I have worked for an international agency and I've um, worked with many colleagues globally, so I feel really comfortable in a remote environment, things like that. So always do it evidence-based and, and your background-based. Don't be fluffy. Don't say what they want to hear be real and have substance. And that way you'll excel and that way you'll also be different to everybody else who answers that question because everyone always says the same. I work hard, I'm honest, I'm reliable, I'm a good person, I'm a team player. Try and avoid all the obvious things and really look at yourself. That'd be my best tip, hope that helps. I love that tip. Thank you so much, Sharon. So, okay, so if, um we don't have any more questions going once or twice okay maybe this could be our um, last one i think last one okay perfect from ayala sierra what advice can you give to those who don't have any experience yet but eager to learn okay um in my opinion i think that okay i'm gonna i'm gonna share something so in in the past i always get candidates who are on inexperience or whose experience is actually not relevant to the position what i always tell them if you really want to have a shift in your to do a shift in your career and but you don't have an experience for example i'm a recruiter and then i woke up one day i just want to be a graphic designer okay what you can do is first to do to study Okay, the position that there are a lot of online courses that you can um, 
you can apply for that there are a lot of youtube videos that you can watch everything is online nowadays so first you have to know the skill set that you need for uh, for you to be successful in the position second look for job openings that do not require experience so maybe um your experience in that field but not experience in this field don't be shy to apply if the position say you have 20 years of experience um, as a manager, but then you want to try graphic design or you want to try web development, but again, you don't have experience. And there's an opening for a junior developer or a junior graphic designer and doesn't require experience, but only requires basic knowledge in certain technologies or certain tools. Don't be shy to apply. It's just a stepping stone. Okay, you will get to your, um, to your career path. You will also reach your career goals if you just take one step at a time. Okay, you can't be, for example, you have 20 years of experience as a manager. And then, I want to be a graphic designer. Okay, I will apply for a senior graphic designer. I want to be a web developer. Okay, I will be a senior web developer. It's not going to be as easy as you want it to be. Okay, so you have to start from scratch. I'd also add, AL, it's really important that you practice what you preach. So there is no point saying I'm going to be a developer and I've done a degree or I've done a course and you haven't built a portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, so build portfolios on Behance, GitHub, um, do some paid work on Upwork, do some internships, paid and unpaid, and when I say unpaid, I'm talking, you know, like 10 hours. Um, help out family members, see what you can do for them that's in your line. Anything that's gonna add value and help you get some relevant experience, okay, that you can apply to your new jobs. That would be one of my biggest tips is, um, foreigners are always looking for, when have you gone above and beyond? right? Don't just get a degree. How? Mm -hmm. How have you shown that you've learned from your degree? How badly do you want it? So yeah, as I said, Upwork, freelancer.com, internships, um, approaching companies, approaching your family and friends to do work. That would be my best tip. All right. Really good tips. Thank you so much, Tracy. And can I just say thank you to everyone who Thank you, provided Nick. us with their very good questions. We love the energy and we love that you prepared these really good questions for us. All right. And we are getting comments from Delvin Rose, Valeria Gray. Thank you, Nerese and Erica. Learned a lot of your actionable tips today. Have a good day. Thank you. Very informative. Another learning from Angelica Balanza. Thank you so much, Angelica. All right. So, guys, again, before we have really enjoyed our time with you this afternoon i really hope that you did learn a lot from us but before we leave we just want to remind you we have a lot of amazing opportunities waiting for you okay so after everything that you've learned on how to land an interview how to ace that interview please please visit our careers page um just search for filter and also we have our official facebook page our linkedin page and if i may just um share with you we have an upcoming shopify event it's one of the Woo! biggest this year and we are inviting everyone to um please please save the date on april 10 and be our guest um in our shopify virtual event so you don't anywhere you are even if you're in the beach even you're, if you're at home please join us and definitely if you enjoyed this webinar that narisa and i presented today you will definitely definitely learn more during our Shopify events. Okay. So Thanks, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Before we before we end, lots of messages about where do they get the e-certificate. Mm -hmm. um, our filter gurus on the chat are sending another link right as we speak. It'll be coming soon, so make sure you click on that. Um, but I hope to look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Thank you for investing an hour and a half with us. Thank and I wish you. you all the best in your careers. And send us your resumes. Um, but just stay yeah. on if you want the link again for the email. So thank right. you, thank everyone. You so much, everyone. Bye, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.